All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me once again. Tonight, we're going to cover a topic that uh, you know, people told me to steer away from, but I'm, a, I'm really open minded about the subject. And, uh, you know, I feel like we have uh, bigger problems going on in the world. But I have with me David Weiss, and he's a flat earther. Um, and, and don't stop the video just yet. Just hear him out because we're going to cover a lot of topics. I mean, I have a list. He's also into conspiracies. So I want to talk about Antarctica, Admiral Burden, Operation High Jump, disappearing people, underground and military bases, Hollow Earth, My Lab, WK Ultra, Disney and NASA. We're going to ask him, is Flat Earth a PSYOP in itself? Other uh, planets, Moon and Mars. Uh, extraterrestrial wow. life, CIA, <laughs> ancient gods, and genetic DNA. All, All right, right well, so we're, we're going to have to do a part two and a part three because we only have one hour today. Yeah, yeah, we only have one yeah. hour. So, so I mean, well, let's start off with Antarctica and Admiral Byrd. That have something to do with flat Earth, and um, I know Antarctica has something to do with flat Earth. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and before we start, um, I was listening to you know some of your guests and stuff, and a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about kind of goes in conflict with what they're saying but it actually also supports what they're saying and as we go along you'll see what i'm talking about um the stuff with extraterrestrial secret space program what's happening in antarctica in when i the way i look at it is that stuff makes more sense on a flat earth right and i'm so confident in this i'm offering a bitcoin for anybody that can supply one proof of the globe and i have um we'll talk about that later but as far as uh, um, Antarctica, Antarctica is uh, off limits and we believe it's off limits, not because of aliens, not because of uh, all sorts of stuff. It's because they want to hide uh, what's going on down there. If we had free access to Antarctica, we'd all find out that we don't live on a spinning ball hurtling through space. And so we have the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Um, we have Operation High Jump when they were kind of just discovering what's going on down there. And then all of these other, um, you know, projects that literally were trying to figure out what this place is and kind of break through it. Well, now I know one person, I had a guest on my show that actually traveled to Antarctica, but I don't know if he ever saw the firmament. Can you describe what the firmament is? And I mean, he couldn't find much about that. I think a lot of things are guarded down there. Like, you know, if there's extraterrestrials or Nazis or whatever's down there, they're definitely guarding it. Like, right. And so we're going to talk about things that we can prove. We're also going to talk about things we're going to speculate because we don't have access. So we can only speculate today. That's um, speculation is fine. Yeah, yeah. That's what I so, do. So real quick, the this is not the flat earth. The flat earth is not a disc floating in space like they like they, you know, the, the controllers want you to think you Google flat earth. Um, you're going to end up seeing pictures like this. This is not what anyone believes. If you Google, um, you know, photos of flat earth, you're going to get a whole bunch of uh discs floating in space. This is from the Flat Earth Society, which Obama plugged a half a dozen times in his speeches. But the Flat Earth Society is just a government disinformation site. It's like, you know, if you Google uh, cure, natural cures for cancer, you're going to end up a big pharma with disinformation about whatever that's about. So what is what is the Flat Earth? The Flat Earth is like a pond, like a lake. If you look at the whole world, there it's a lake. All of the continents are surrounded by water, but all of the water has a container and its shoreline is Antarctica. Antarctica, as you know, probably is the highest land on earth. We live in the Antarctic basin, right? Large bodies of water at rest lay flat. This is the earth that we live on, okay? We can circumnavigate east and west. We can circumnavigate to the north and then to the south, but we can't go like from Santiago south and then pop up over in Australia. Doesn't happen. Um, no one's ever done it. So what So what happens, you know, th this pink line on here is 60 degrees south. That's where the Antarctic Treaty it goes into effect. You can't even see Antarctica from there. And no one's allowed to bring fuel beyond that point, except if you book a vacation to go to Antarctica. Um, all of the companies that you can book are all the same company. They're just subdivisions of the same company. So that's suspicious. For ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, you can go visit this little peninsula here. They'll show you some penguins, some ice. They'll bring you out here. They'll show you a ceremonial South Pole, but you can't prove where you are because compasses don't work and GPS doesn't work. So, and that's it. Nobody is allowed to go into what I call the outer space, right? What's out here? You know, um, Admiral Byrd said, there's land bigger than the United States that no human, filled with resources that no human has ever stepped foot on or see, laid eyes upon, right? 
So what's what's out there? Well, well let me ask you this: like, what what all did, did, did before we go to the Beyond the Ice Wall? What all did Admiral Byrd say? What's the real truth about Admiral Byrd's story? Because you hear that he encountered Nazis and they had UFOs and they fought him off. We don't know if that's true. Might we be heard true. that he went to inner earth and he encountered beings. We, we don't know what's true. Like, what Very do you good. know? Uh, again, so here, here's my take on it. And that, so Admiral Byrd said, there's land beyond the pole. So on a ball, right? On a ball, he's traveling, you know, from Argentina out here and then beyond the South Pole, there's land bigger. So what's he talking about? The land that's over here? I mean, what's he talking about? I think that this whole hollow earth thing came into effect um, as uh, like, because he said there's land beyond the pole, they like, well, it's a ball. The only way we can do it is like, tell him it's a hollow earth. And maybe he flew into the hollow earth. The hollow earth is just like the globe earth. It's a prison for your mind. The globe is a prison for your mind because if you believe you live on this globe, then you don't believe that there's any walls anywhere. But if you believe that the earth is flat, well, we're not allowed beyond here, okay? So that's a, that's a fence. Humans don't like fences. We don't like to be caged in. So if we knew that there's maybe more land, extra territory, here's a map, a Japanese map that showed up in the New York Journal in the 1800s, showing 50 other continents outside of the United, outside of the Antarctica. What's that about, right? What if there was other land out there? We'd call that What's the more, more land? Well, land is terra, territory. Extra is more, extra territory, extraterrestrials could come from the outer space. So I see. Our, yeah. So are extraterrestrials from the earth plane coming to inner earth here, the, the, the inner earth, um, they'd have to come through Antarctica. So maybe, you know, maybe we're guarding all of Antarctica. Maybe... You know, maybe the real rulers of our worlds live out here and they're controlling everything in here. I don't know. Either one of those could be true. It but makes extra sense. Extraterrestrials come from thousands of miles away, not tr trillions of miles. Well, we right? don't know if they, they we don't know if they did come in. They could be interdimensional. There's a lot well, of interdimensions. Absolutely. So that's a whole nother thing. That's why, you know, in, in interdimensions, that's a whole nother thing. But people believing that, um, extraterrestrials, human form extraterrestrials are coming from planets that are around other stars. Think about this. The closest star to us is, is um, Alpha Centauri. Okay? Yeah. It, it, it's, its distance is mind-boggling and that's the closest star. If our sun was directly right here, if our sun was, uh, was just a mile over your head, you look up in the sky, it would fill the entire sky, right? It would fill the entire sky. Agreed? If, yeah. if I move the sun, the heliocentric sun, a mile over your head, you look up, it would just fill the sky horizon, horizon. Then you, you, you take the sun and you move it away 93 million miles where they tell us it is, and it becomes the size of a frigging coin held at arm's length, right? It yeah. becomes a little dot in the sky. If I doubled that distance, but just to be safe, we'll make it eight times farther. Scientifically provable, your eye cannot resolve something that small. It would get so small that your eye could not see it. That's a light hour. The closest star is four is four and a half light years away, right? Believing that, and then all of the other stars are magnitudes farther. So believing, belief is the enemy of knowing. Just thinking that we could see those stars is utter nonsense. So what are we seeing when we're looking up in the sky? What are those stars? I couldn't tell you what they are, but I can tell you where they are. And they're here within the Earth system. When we look up at a star, this is the star Arcturus through a P900 super zoom camera. That's anybody really cool. can do this. Yeah, anybody can do this. This isn't a burning ball of hydrogen 100 trillion miles away. Just for your listeners, I do this every show, and I'm going to ask you, and people hear the number trillion. Our debt is $27 trillion and $97 trillion, whatever it is. Do you know how much a trillion is? How long do you think one trillion seconds is? While you're thinking, here's a star, Sirius. One trillion seconds, how long do you think that is? I have no clue. Just, just take a guess. Like, uh, you can, I'll give you a Bitcoin if you guess it within a week. Um, about 10 minutes. A, a trillion seconds, 10 minutes? <laughs> Come on. All right, you're not, you're not even doing the math. It's 31,000 years. 
Oh, oh, I, I wasn't even really thinking. About I, it. I know you weren't really thinking because I'm mesmerizing you with these. What stars really look like? Thirty-one thousand years, and stars are hundreds of trillions of miles away. It's it's mind-boggling, right? Here's a bunch of different stars. They kind of look like they're underwater to me, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, if you if you ever look up star in a jar, have you ever seen that on a science show? No. Where they take a, a jar of water and they focus sound waves into them and these little stars appear in the water as bright as the sun. Little orbs, little stars appear in the water from sound waves. Don't Sacred ask me geometric patterns. Yeah, very good. You love sacred geometry. But they want us to believe that we live on this, corkscrewing through space and time, right? Corkscrewing billions of miles a year, right? Th this is nonsense. Are you familiar with the Georgia Guidestones? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, besides having the New World Order marching orders on them, there's a, there's a hole drilled in the, into the center stone. And if you look through it, Polaris is right through that stone. Right through that hole. It's never moved in over 40 years, right? We're corkscrewing through space, traveling trillions of miles in circular patterns. You know, every six months, we're 190 million miles on the other side of the sun. But somehow Polaris never leaves that hole. Well, what I, what I don't understand is how is there no, uh, uh, no, no, I mean, I believe that there's extraterrestrial life. I believe there's a different forms of life everywhere we're just not content come knowing where they're coming from you know well, and, actually, and why are we so guarded in it's like we're in a prison here well they so they, they exactly they don't want us knowing our origins they don't want us to know that we are at the center of creation that this is a very special place that this place is intelligently designed right this place is intelligently designed well that opens up a can of worms for people that don't believe in a creator right so that they don't want us no, not being able to deny that there's a cre creator. They, they want us thinking that we're spinning out of control, lost in space, you know, where an asteroid could take us out at any time, where none of that is true. None of it. We're at the center of creation. This place was created for us. And, our, and the power of our mind is unlimited. And they don't want you to know that. Otherwise, if we all woke up to that tomorrow... And if we didn't live in fear, because they want us in fear of asteroids, fear of climate change, fear of running out of water, running out of food, running out of dinosaur juice for our cars, afraid of nuclear bombs, all of that is nonsense. It's all made up to keep you living in fear. So you give away your divine powers that we were granted by just being created here and giving, giving them up. They can't take them from us. They have to have us willingly give it to them. And uh, it's, a th it's called revelation of the method. They always have to tell us what they're doing. They always have to give us the ability to say, no, I do not consent. But most people don't even know, and they just give up all their rights, everything. That's where we are. It's really interesting. I mean, I, I definitely believe in a creator. I believe in intelligent design. I mean, it's all around us. It's something you, can, you, can't, you can't deny. I don't know why right. somebody would deny that. You know, well, I used to deny it before I discovered that the earth was uh, was created. I, I believe in evolution, the Big Bang nonsense. You know, think about this. All stars are are compressed gases, burning balls of gas that burn for billions of years. If you get a friggin ball of hydrogen and light it on fire, it's going to explode. It's not going to burn for a billion years. OK, and how is a ball of gas in a vacuum? I mean, right there, everything about space is complete nonsense. If you look at the pictures from NASA, this is the first one that was on everyone's iPhone called the Blue Marble. NASA admits it was made in Photoshop. The guy that made it admitted it and told how he made it. Then a few years later, they come out with this shot. Do you notice any a problem with the United States? Yeah, it's completely different. Yeah. So some people say it's the angular side. It's the way the angle, the di different aperture bull bull bullshit, I say. We can measure scientifically by driving across you know uh, mexico and baja and and we can say all right we can prove this is unquestionably 934 miles give or take five miles whatever okay the, they tell us the diameter of earth is 7917 miles well i should be able to fit eight and a half of these segments in between these two lines do you see eight and a half segments fitting in between those two lines no right so another painting
another painting. Why is NASA lying to us? Why are they showing us pictures of Pluto with a desert that looks like the dog Pluto? Maybe that's just my imagination. Why are they showing uh, a picture from 2014 that everyone's seen of this gassy spinning, you know, stormy planet with this storm being uh, bigger than Earth? Right. And then two and a half years later, they go, look, we got pictures of the northern lights that proves that there's a magnetic core just like Earth. Well, this is the same friggin' picture. Every single dot is the same. Every single cloud is exactly the same. Exactly. Right. Which, they which, what, what is that? Which, what, what is that? This is the only picture that we re uh, that from NASA of Jupiter. Right. Okay. NASA, NASA will show us, uh, you know, um, a, a time lapse of one of a, a satellite heading towards Jupiter. Look at the, how these clouds move. This is over a couple of hours or a couple of days, whatever, it doesn't matter. Two and a half years later, all of the freaking clouds and storms and everything resets. This is gravy for your mind. This is a, not gravy for your mind because that would be a positive thing. This is turning your mind into gravy. It, this is so insane. It's it's uh, it's very interesting. You, you can keep going with your presentation. I'm I'm, I'm I want to learn it here 100. Like, percent there, There's so much so much to this, and uh, Phil, you know, any way you want to take the question, but let I, me like, let me let me let me ask you this: Why do you think that NASA and Disney are the same company? Well, I don't think they're the same company. I think that they're part of the same agenda. They're here to to um, melt the minds of children and adults. You know, when you were a little kid, your parents parked you in front of the TV. You know, when I was a little kid, I'm a little older than you. The Sunday nights was the Wonderful World of Disney. It was like everyone, everyone watched the Wonderful World of Disney. They yeah, I remember Vern that. Yeah, they had Werner von Braun on. They had they had, they have they have astronauts on. All liars. Every single one of them is a liar. Werner von, von Braun was a Nazi. He was a Nazi brought over here to run NASA. Right. Well, that's I'm like, OK, you know what? These guys uh, had some not some they 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 pardoned the guy because it will help our space program. Werner von Braun died and this was on his gravestone. Psalms 19 ones, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The firmament is the dome. Why does a Nazi rocket scientist have that on his gravestone? Is that revelation of the method? Is that rubbing it in our face? Is that a deathbed wish to expose it? Um, I couldn't tell you, but here's a, uh, here's the uh, uh, when, when you guys say firmament, they have flat earth people. What is that? What is it? The what firmament is, that? is the dome over the earth. The dome, the dome, the earth is under a dome. So there's a dome, um, which is like a looking glass. If you like the Bible, the Bible describes it as a looking glass. And I believe that the real sun is above the firmament that we're on the inside and it's focusing it like a magnifying glass focuses a light to a point. And it's focusing that sun that circles around our earth in between the tropics. What do you think about the people that say like the Sumerians said, you know, 6,000 years ago that they knew astronomy and they knew all the planets and they knew, you know, that the earth was round. Well, they didn't. Uh, every single, every single culture before, every single culture before NASA um, you know, knew that the earth was flat. They all talked about it. And it's, and all of our history is a lie. I mean, all of these civilizations were flat earth, except NASA, the cult of NASA. NASA is, is lying. Um, but here's the thing. We didn't learn. Wait, I want to check this out. So the Sumerians did think it was flat? Everybody did. So everything before 1900 was, is, is that you can't verify yourself is um, probably a lie. I interviewed a woman uh, named Ruth, 102 years old, back in February of 2020. And uh, she had such a great memory when she was five. She told me, I, and, and she lived in Connecticut on a farm, no electricity. And I said, she walked to school every day. I said, what did they teach you in elementary school? She knew the name of her school, teacher, kids in the class, the road it was on, amazing memory. And uh she said they taught me the earth was flat, but then they changed it years later. So we found newspaper articles on microfilm from the New York Journal, again, with now the New York Times, uh, saying that the earth is, uh, that, no, no, that teachers were being persecuted, stories of teachers being persecuted for trying to teach the heliocentric model in school, right? It was, in, it was injected into our, into, our, into, our, into our, you know, whatever, into the into history books. I mean, you know the story of Aristophanes, right? Aristophanes, no, the guy with the six of shadows in Greek, in Greece, where he figured out the shape of the earth because there was no shadow here and there was a shadow here. I heard really about 500 that. miles away. 
right? So you can do some perfectly good math and figure out the size of this sphere, right? But that, that's first you'd have to assume that the that all light rays come in parallel, right? And why would why would anyone think that when no one has ever seen parallel rays come in? They all come in splayed out just like that. But what he doesn't realize is on a on a flat earth with a small local sun, he could be right here, no shadow, and his buddy 500 miles away could be here, shadow. He could do the same math and prove the sphericity of this flat surface. It's just math. Math describes whatever you want it to describe, right? So a small local sun gives you the same results as he got. So, but here's the other thing. Aristophanes discovered the shape of the earth and the size of the earth within 2%, according to Carl Sagan, when he did Cosmos. And uh, he was never mentioned in any books ever until the late 1900s. Okay, that's when he was inserted into our Rockefeller funded school books and it was implanted in our minds. Right. Well, this is crazy how this cabal, this Rockefeller, you want to say Rothschild Rockefeller has really taken control of everything. And, and, and I mean, if you want to talk about how they funded wars, you know, they you know, every war that we've had was a false flag funded by them. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah, uh, These are all bankers wars, all bankers wars. And think about this 1920s. They're still teaching flat earth in the United States in public schools. Then what happened? Wars, depression. They're literally just making people struggle for their for their lives. The, the story is for a long time before everyone knew the earth was flat. And there was two classes of people, the, the, the kings and queens, you know, the royalty and then the, 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 the serfs. And all the, everyone knew it was flat, but nobody cared because they were just worried about survival. All they wanted to do is survive. And, and then the Industrial Revolution came around and people started getting smarter and gaining more power and, and more influence. And then they realized they need to put everybody in a prison for their mind because if people figure out that there's more, you know, that there's more land, that, they're, that this place is not what they're describing, then uh, you know, then they were going to lose power. So it's all about them keeping power. So they can you, created. Can I ask you this? Like, yeah, what are some of these places that are beyond the walls? Like, do, do you think? I mean, can you describe some of them? Do you know any of them? So, so I, I again, this is again speculation. But um, there's a story called the Iron Republic, and you could you can still get the book on Amazon. It was a uh, a series of of articles in a magazine called Florida Magazine. It came out in 1901, or give or take a year or so. So, and it, it was about a, a a New York senator, I believe, who was just fed up with the system and retired, got a big ship and the crew, and went out to Antarctica. And when he was out there, he found a, an opening. He went in and he we got through the opening and he, boom, he came out in the ocean again. He was lost at sea for about a month. And then they came across this land and a boat came out and greeted them like, hey, you know, where are you from? Like, we're from America. Where, what is this place? And he's like, oh, this is the Iron Republic. And the captain said, you know, where is the Iron Republic? And he goes, well, it's on the other side of the ice wall about the same distance as the United States is on the other side. And they're like, what? And they went in. And they, this was in the 1901, and they, the, the, the articles were all about what the civilization was like there. There was flat screen TVs, electric cars, levitating things, all a completely different society, an advanced society, a peaceful society where there was no upper class or lower class. Everybody was equal. And, and then, um, and so, so all of that, you know, then the guy wrote all these articles. Well, do you know how like on eBay with the internet, you can, if you want a copy of like the first time magazine or just whatever, you can find anything on eBay, on the internet. You can't find a single copy of this magazine anywhere. They've all been scooped up. There's no more original copies. There's just the, the, the prints of it. And uh, there's online, if you just search um, um, the audio uh, on YouTube, uh, The Morgyle, the channel of The Morgyle did a reading of it called, uh, it called just called The Iron Republic Reading, uh, audio book or whatever. You'll be able to find it, listen to it. It's a great, it's a great listen to. But again, do I have any proof of that? No. You know, well, I mean, make you, 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 make, you make good, it's good speculation and it's fun to yeah. speculate. I mean, that's what my channel is about, a lot of speculation. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so where you think that, um, I mean, what, what do you think we're being imprisoned in here for? I mean, what do you think this is? Like, do you yeah. think it's a trap for our souls? Do you think it's a simulation or what? No, what's, what good question. Good question. So 
Yeah, I think that the that the 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 royalty they always you know they, we call them the blue bloods. They breed within their family, and they have us believing that that's a bad thing. Well, I don't know if that's really a bad thing. There's uh, there's some interesting uh, research on that, but they they have what I believe is called genetic memory, so they can make plans that are two hundred years in the making. Like, would you make a plan for two hundred years from now? No, because we're self centered, you know, in, in this scary world, and we're just doing what we can do to survive. Um, they they all there it's all about them maintaining power so the way they they you know they have us in this prison for our mind and the analogy i use is from uh the matrix with with uh with counter reeves at the beginning he's depressed he's in his apartment he's trying, something's wrong he can't figure it out his you know but because his mind is still in the prison it's plugged into the matrix right yeah. and by the end of the movie he there you know he metaphorically unplugs from the matrix figures out who he is where he is what he is and the power of his mind they don't want us to know the power of our mind yes they don't want us to exactly know yes that we can create with our mind that everything that you have in your life is because the way that you think yeah really I, I, I truly believe that i think and if they keep you in a state of fear you're going to think down you're going to think depressed you're going to think scared therefore you're not going to be able to create um, right. you know, um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, you have to, it's, it's almost like there's, and I don't like new age theory. I mean, I'm, I'm not against new age people. People can believe what they want, but they always say you need to, keep, and one thing I will agree with them is they say you need to keep a high vibration. You know, you need, that's, they, they, that is true. That is true. Like to some extent, you want to stay well, at a high, high, you, you, you want to keep your high vibration. You don't want to live in fear. Fear is a low vibration. You want to, there's basically, here's the, here's the way I see it. The currency of this world isn't money. It's souls, right? Everybody wants souls. You have a main soul in your body and you have hundreds of other souls. You have a family of souls and, and you are the, these souls. Uh, I, the way I look at it, they're a, a spark of the creator. They're a piece of God. And that's within you. That's the spark of life. You're here in this realm, having this experience to expand the mind of God. That's, that's what our job is. And we have a couple simple rules. Don't break natural law or God's law. And that is don't kill anybody. Don't steal from anybody. Don't break anyone's free will and help your neighbor. That's it. That's all right. And, but if they have us living in fear, fear of nuclear bombs and fear of just asteroids and, and everything and fear of alien attacks and, and wars, right? Well, we're, we become nihilistic. We become, um, you know, self-centered a little bit. We're, we're, we're scrounging, you know, to hoard and stuff. That's not how it should be. That's not the way it needs to be. They have us believing that utopia is a bad thing, that, that it could never happen. You know, there was some experiment, I forget, in the 70s, whatever, where they tried to build a utopian civilization and everybody killed each other. Um, that's all a psyop. People are generally good people. I can tell just by talking to you, you're a good person, okay? I try yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and I go to work. I, I work full time. I do this podcast because it's a hobby, but I do yeah. it because the, I do it because I, learn, I want to learn. That's why I had you on my show, because I'm all about learning. I want to know what this whole realm, what this whole life is about. I want to know what happens when we die. I want to know why we reincarnate, if we reincarnate. I want to know your thoughts on that. What do you yeah. think? Do you think we you know, that's, reincarnate? A, that's a great question. The way, I, the way I look at it, this is me. I'm not speaking for anybody else. I believe that the stars that we see are the souls, are all of the souls of the world. Okay? And maybe the sun is maybe the soul of the creator. Okay? I don't know. Right? Um, and it, we're all having these physical experiences here and, and the uh, evil wants to get to our soul, but our souls are protected with layers of, you know, of love and caring and um, desire and motive, you know, um, just all of these things that make us human. And they want to take those away through fear. They want to, they want to make us, um, you know, get to the point where they can break. So we've lost all hope and that exposes our soul. And then you make a deal and sell your soul. You're not supposed to sell your soul or lose control of your soul. So that's my belief, what's happening here. And our, our goal here to win this game, if you want to look at it like a computer game, is to maintain control of your soul and then, and help as many people as you can. Imagine if everybody had that, I uh, had that had that philosophy going. One thing I go over a lot on my channel, I want to get your opinion on this too, is alien abduction. I mean, it's been proven that people have had experiences where they, they, they get taken up or they get paralyzed, they're paralyzed. I mean, and then they're take, all of a sudden they're on a craft, they're being experimented on, mm -hmm. semen are being taken from men, eggs are yep. being taken from women, yep. then they see a hybrid child. What, what do you think this is all about? I mean, do you think... 
I, I think that there are there are issues. Okay, so he, here's the thing. You know, some people say that's the military, this and that. I think that it. I think that there are experiences like that. I've heard enough stories. I've heard. Uh, I. I've heard tons um, from people that I trust. And so what's more likely you're an alien. Let's say you by chance you're on the, you're on a planet that's by the closest star. So you're only 25 trillion miles away. Okay. You're going to fly through intergalactic space, 25 trillion miles. So if you're going 25 miles a second, it'll only take you, uh, I don't know, 31,000 years to get here. Okay. Which is ridiculous. It, none, none of it, none of it makes any sense. You come here, you abduct somebody and you go back. Or perhaps you're here, you're an alien, you're an extraterrestrial, you're having breakfast with your wife. After breakfast, you say, honey, I got to go abduct somebody over here. I'm going to anally probe them. I'll be back in time for dinner. Okay. Not, it's not that. What do you think it is? is I think when we, this was the whole reason why I brought it up because you were talking about souls. I think they want our souls. Oh, maybe, I think they're maybe, trying but to create I, but, soul. Right, right. That's the I, whole I, purpose. I'm with you. And and I don't believe they, they I, I kind of feel that they've lost their, their imagination. They've lost their, their, um, the, the things that make us human and that desire, that imagination, we build the world on imagination. Like the computer I'm on right now, somebody imagined it first and then they made it. Right? Yeah. So they, they're using us to create the world that they want. So they want us in fear. They want, they, they want to control our minds and they control it with the, with the globe, which is a prison for our mind. Um, but whatever the purpose is, what I'm saying is they're coming from just a couple thousand miles away. Yeah. They're not coming across intergalactic space. They're coming from the outer space. All of the largest telescopes in the world, besides being owned by the Vatican, which is a whole nother thing, they're in they're in like Santiago, they're in South Africa, they're in New Zealand, and they're not looking up, they're looking out. They're looking out. Why, why do you think, let's get south. back to that, because that's interesting. I like to talk about the CIA and I like to talk about the Vatican. Why do you think the Vatican has the largest telescopes? And what do you think, do you, what do you think they play, what part, what part do you think the Vatican plays in this whole evil empire? I think that they're, they're the center of evil. I think that's where, you know, if you want to believe in the devil, I think that's where the devil probably presides. And they they know the truth of this world and they have more wealth than uh, all of the world combined. You know, they, Do you they believe can, that they've hidden all the history. Like, away it's all there. Them? They have it what, all. Oh, what, did, what, what, uh, what do you think about um, part? Uh, I don't know how to, how to say it. Um, I've heard I've listened to podcasts on it and it's very interesting. It's called Tartaria or is it, is it do you know what I'm talking about? Um, hundred percent. Tartaria is, um, let me show you, I'm going to pull up my app and I want to show you something on it. And then let me talk about the app just for a little, little bit, because it'll help you to learn, uh, more about this. So you, you see my app and if I, yeah. I hit the web up comes a list of um, here, it'll be here under interviews, but down on the bottom right, mud floods, Tataria. Tataria was a worldwide civilization uh, that was here in the 1800s. And then some catastrophe happened. There was some worldwide mud flood and I have a theory on how it happened. Um, and, and most things were wiped out. And then just the few people that were left um, kind of restarted the world and some evil pricks uh, kind of took charge, you know, the, the royal families and whether they're royal or not, or they just moved into those buildings, you know, because when the there there's buildings here, like when Christopher Columbus supposedly discovered America, there was buildings. There was a Tatarian buildings here already, right? Is that so, how long Tataria lasted? Was, was Tataria could have been here for thousands of years. I don't know how long it was, but uh, if you look at the thumbnail here, it talks about um, rail across the in, uh, intercontinental, transcontinental railroads were not built. They were excavated. Wow. Let your mind wrap around that. If you hit that Tataria button, up comes a playlist of tons of videos on the topic that'll really get you going. And what I suggest to people is watch those, the ones that you like, subscribe to those channels, and then watch their other videos. There's a lifetime of information in there. Tataria is one of the most fascinating topics ever, right? Yeah, it really is. It's, a, it's amazing. Amazing, amazing. What else, do you, do you know anything else about some... it? Like, like, do you know like who, who, the, what kind of people they were? Or like, um, do you know like, like anything about I, that? I think that uh, like Tesla, 
I think Tesla is a uh, um, from you know the Tatarian Empire, one of the people that survived uh, Tataria, and because he had all the free energy technology. Um, I think that they were an advanced civilization. There's videos, you know, the whole story of the World's Fairs and San Francisco and the and the and the um, the earthquake. I think it's all bullshit. It's all it's all to hide our history. No, wait, you know, all right. They have these so incredible they, I mean, buildings I, I believe, that we couldn't build today. They had buildings so big at the World's Fair. I they believe the they're hide, hiding our history. Dude, what do you think about ancient Samaria then? Do you think that existed? Do you think like um, that they, 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 they discovered those Sumerian tablets and that there was the Anunnaki and the Anunnaki came here and genetically modified the first man? Or do you think that's all made up? I, um, I don't know. That, that's a great question. And there probably was some serious genetic modification. But again, they didn't come from outer space. They no, I understand from- that. But yeah. I mean, do you believe the story? Did you, I mean, do you think it's real? Because I kind of believe it. I, I, I it, actually it, believe I, it. I could go. It could, I, show me more evidence. Yeah, it very well could be real. I'm not real. I'm not ruling it out at all. It, you know, but um, it's on the cuneiform tablets that they discovered. They discovered cuneiform tablets, you know, the clay right. tablets. I'm aware. Clay. I'm aware. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would have to say I, I do agree with it, but there's there's so much that we don't know. But you want to talk about the mud flood. Think about this. I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing the app again. Hold on. So yeah. if you go if you go out to um to uh we have where to go. Where do this okay. is fascinating, um, by the way. Thank you yeah. for doing this. I really yeah. I really yeah. am interested in this stuff. No problem. So. Here's our pond and our sun circles around in here and it's melted out this pond. Here's all of this is Antarctica. It go, goes on and on. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. There's 200, 300 feet of ice there. They always tell us that, you know, if Antarctica melts, the oceans are going to rise by a couple hundred feet and we're all going to be dead. Well, how could the ice melting off this little island change all of the oceans of the world? It's so tiny. Maybe it would raise it a quarter of an inch, maybe, you know, but if Antarctica is as high as they tell us, and if Antarctica is as big as we think it is, well, imagine if the sun, instead of circling around here, all of a sudden said, hey, I'm going to circle out here now. I'm going to go and make a bigger loop. I'm going to go out here. Well, what would happen? All of, all of this would be frozen, right, until the sun moves out here. Then all of this ice would melt and drain into the, into the um, basin. And so, bam, here's your mud flood. Here's your Noah's flood. Here's where everything changes, right? And then when that water gets pressurized, you know, when the atmosphere pushes it back out again, now you have a new world here. Whoever survived, you know, new generation of people, they have no idea that there's people out here. They have no idea because they can't go across Antarctica. It's too cold. It's too dark. It's too... Um, it's too hellish, you know, and they just don't have the technology to go out there. So now you have two different worlds and then it happens again. That's and you so have a amazing. Third world out here. That's so amazing. That this is, this is an actual possibility because I, I believe you about Antarctica. Yeah. Like, it, it, I mean, it's I, so, it's so un, un, uh, un, um, what, what's the word? It's unattainable. You know what I mean? It's, right. It's, it, it, it's, it's the Antarctic treaty is the only treaty that's lasted the test of time you know, when all the countries were killing each other in 1959, uh, all of a sudden everyone signed on. Hey, no one can go there. Don't even fly an airplane over it uh, because we don't want to disturb the migrational paths of the penguins. I- I'm saying that's nonsense. It's you all think, nonsense. Do you think the Nazis could have went there? Oh, absolutely. I think that the, the that uh, in the early, you know, maybe, I, I don't even know how long ago, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but there's maps of Antarctica without ice on it. So how old is everything? Maybe this earth is really young. You know, yeah. I, I, I used to laugh when I heard, you know, of uh, the Christian's young earth theory. Um, it could be even younger than that. We don't know. We don't know. But yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, there's it's, maps of Antarctica showing no ice. Well, what's that about? What's out there? I'd love to know. I'd love to know. What is, what is, this, what is some of this stuff like the walls of Asgard? What does that mean? What's, what's, I don't know about saying. that. I don't know that one. Um, it's, on, I just, it's on your I, map. I, I, oh, um, oh, on here? Yeah. Yeah. This uh, I, again. What What are the the names of these places? Uh, I don't know. You know. Oh, um, dude, they're just they're just places out there that we don't know. They're just right. like right, like the one, the Summer's Gate. Maybe they're worried about global warming because then the the gate will open up 
and people like someone might be able to slip through and 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 you know like they did for um the the iron republic story you know they, they're maybe they're trying to keep the earth cold to keep all of these gates closed to keep us in because they don't want anybody coming in they don't want anybody going out they're trying to keep the world separate maybe i don't know and who is these people that's trying to keep the world separate? Just the the, the, the rulers, the royals, the Rothschilds? The- exactly, 100%. The banking families, the people that really run the world. And I, my guess is that there's people that are pulling their strings that are that we don't even know their names. And maybe yeah. they live out in the outer space out here. Yeah, you know? extraterrestrials. I, that, that would Extra? be an, that'd be like considered an extraterrestrial. It doesn't have to be from space. It could right. be interdimensional. It could be, you know, like, um, you know, so like, what are your thoughts on uh, like like things like angels and demons? Then, just to, sir, just I want to get your opinion on it. My opinion is sure. There's stuff like that. Again, that's more of uh, you know that's harder to prove. I've had some experiences with what I call um um sh- what I call them shadow people or whatever. Oh yeah, I, shadow I, people. Yeah, they're interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I used to be petrified of them because they would, it would happen, you know, every once in a while, they'd, when I'm going to sleep, they would hold me down. I couldn't move and stuff. But then I just said, I realized all I have to say is I don't consent. Get the, get the F out. And uh, it, it, they, it stopped happening. You think I people can say they we, do the same thing with abductions? Uh, say that again. You think this, people could do the same thing with abductions? I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what their contract is. You know, maybe people come here saying they, they agree to be abducted. I don't know. This is all done. You know, yeah. our whole world is run on contract law. Maybe it's very the- weird. Like, I, I've always wondered why, like, you know, like, one, one, another reason why I, went, I have my shows, you know, it's I told you, like, I wanted to know what happens when we pass away. And I've had many people on near-death experiencers, um, past life regressionists, um, I've studied it very deeply, you know, um, I went into deeply into what goats are, you know, like, um, but another thing I want to know is wh- why has the earth been so separate? Like, why is there no other life supposedly besides ours? And I, I don't want to believe that. I want to believe there's other life out there. Well, like you said it could be exactly right, like the map you showed. It's right here. And the other thing is what's below us. What's below us? The deepest hole ever dug is short is, is short of eight miles, right? Eight miles, deepest hole, seven and a half miles, right? Then they hit an impenetrable barrier. That's like drilling through halfway through the skin of the apple, and that's it. And then so somehow now we're getting they into know, hollow earth, right? They know yeah, like- they, so that again, that's all just theory. The deepest hole ever dug is halfway through the skin of the apple. When they use the ground penetrating radar, they were wrong every step of the way. The ground penetrating radar didn't tell them anything. And so somehow they know what the next 4,000 miles is. This is pseudoscience. This is a prison for your mind. They're creating the globe for your mind. Because if you're in a prison, if your mind's in a prison, you're spinning out of control, lost in space, you give up your divinity. You give up your ability to make um, proper decisions in life. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Wait, um, and, and here's the other thing. With the, with the people you have on your show, they just need to shift their understanding a little bit. Like the people that talk about the secret space program, yeah, it's the secret propulsion program to go to the outer space, not go to the cosmic space. That's it. It's the same thing. They just have the wrapping their, their story around the wrong model. Aliens, extraterrestrials, the words are right there, right? There, there's really nobody that you have on that doesn't, their story doesn't make more sense on a flat earth. Astrology makes perfect sense on a flat earth. It makes zero sense in a heliocentric world. How does that, how does that make sense? Can you explain that? Cause I'm interested. Yeah. So, so, you know, when they say uh, Mars is in retrograde and it's going to, you know, you're going to have be careful. Don't make any major decisions. I'm like, how does a rock 25 million miles away that can't even affect the tide. I can barely see going to affect my life. That was my yeah. attitude. Yeah, but then, me too. What, yeah, but then what if you, what if you realize that Mars is right here within the Earth system? All of those all of those wandering stars now called planets are named after demigods. This is what Mars really looks like. Okay, it's a little out of focus, but look at it. It's like sacred geometry. It's right here within the Earth system. We're all connected electrically and magnetically to these things that we see in the sky because they're all close. These are the projectors of our life, our, our lives. Okay, that's Mars. Wow. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. 
Yeah, there's nothing you can say other than I got to buy one of those P900 cameras and start looking at this stuff myself because the liars at NASA, you know, are, are lying to me. What's they're, the, uh, what is it, a P900 camera? The Nikon P900 or the P1000. The P900, it was replaced by the P1000, but the P1000 is literally three times the size. Um, it's got, it's 125 times zoom versus an 87 times zoom. Um, but the, the P900 is a lot cheaper and uh, it, it's all you need to prove that the earth is flat and that they're lying to us about things in space. Wow. That's, that's yeah. so amazing. So what is space then? Is that, is it? Yeah. So that's, that's the big question. There is a lot of evidence that space is liquid. Like it gets thicker and thicker until it becomes liquid. And then that becomes thicker and thicker until it becomes the, the actual dome, which might be, you know, I'm not sure what it's made out of, you know, the Bible refers to it made out of like molten glass. And that makes a lot of sense with the way we see things. But, um, I think that the, the lights that we see in the sky, you know, stars, sun, and moon are all being projected into our reality. They don't act like physical objects because when you try to triangulate them with more than two people, the numbers get farther and farther off. It's because you're not, we're seeing them in different positions. Like you see the sun in a different position in the sky than I see it. If we're 50 yards apart and we're both looking at a mirror of the sun behind us, I see the sun on one spot on the mirror and you see it 50 feet over on the other spot of the mirror, right? So we're looking at two different suns, right? Yeah. When we're both standing at the water's edge watching the sunset, we see the um we see the rays of the sun walking across the water to our feet. You're standing right here, you see the sun. I'm over here, I see a line to the sun over here. I don't see your line, you don't see my line, right? You can kind of tie that back to um astro um theology or whatever they call it, uh yeah, where astro theology you're having a personal relationship with the sun as it walks on the water to your feet you know the sun is our savior if you think about it the sun didn't rise for a year and then one day it rose everyone would be like oh my god my savior thank god right? yeah we, we wouldn't be alive us, if we didn't have warms the sun, us, sun and water life yeah right? water right. and the sun we need definitely need to live and you know yeah. there's no i mean this is all amazing stuff man you really honestly like i what before i came into this conversation i was like what's the big deal about whether the earth's flat or round but you make a good point as to why it's flat because we're being lied to about everything and it, it's you know, my last guest who, who who was uh on the he was talking about the secret space program you know made a good point too that you know she was saying that we're being lied to about that and now you're coming on with this and we're being lied to just it just uh What's this say? Polish astronaut tells the truth. Yeah. So, so let me just show you what this is. Give me two minutes to, to, to talk about this. This is the app I made that bypasses Google censorship. Okay. It bypasses, um, it, it bypasses the censorship. Like if you Google, Hey, top 10 reasons the earth could be flat. You're going to get videos and responses, replies that are top 10 reasons the, that the earth is a globe because they don't want you seeing this. So I created this app that shows you how the sun, how the, how the flat earth works and then I also have every day there's a daily video. The featured video today is uh, this a Polish astronaut uh, in an interview said that the Earth is flat. He said it twice. Said oh, that wow. It, and, uh, and so that's the, that's the video. Every day there's a new video on there. Right. Watch the daily video every day for two weeks. At the end of that two weeks, if you think that the Earth is a globe, um, send me one proof and I will give you a Bitcoin. Right. But before you do that, you have to hit the question mark and up comes all the questions you're going to ask. What about eclipses? You know, what about Southern flights? If I hit what about Southern flights up comes videos that that YouTube will not serve you. These are videos that really explain what's going on, but you won't be able to find them online because they're hiding that information from you. Um, so all of your questions are answered there. Like you could spend 500 hours searching the internet for flat earth stuff and you'll probably get two hours worth of good content if you had the fortitude to make it through that 500 hours. But this app will feed you all of the good stuff. Like you watch one video, the next video that comes up is from the app. It's not from YouTube's algorithm trying to gatekeep your mind again, right? Which, Let me which, show you which, how the which, seasons What's your app called? What's your app called? It's called the Flat Earth Sun Moon... Yeah, it's called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock App. I'll tell you about it in a second. But let me just show you real quick how, um, how, how it works, how, um, how the sky clock works. The sky is a perfect clock. I'm going to speed it up. 
the sun is the hour hand. It's actually off the hour hand right now because we're in daylight savings time and they want us to believe that it's an hour later than it actually is. The sun, you see, it's getting farther and farther from the moon yeah. because it laps the moon once every 28 days. So the sun keeps track of the hours and the days. The moon and its phases keep track of the weeks and the moons. Did you know that it used to be 13 moons of 28 days, but then they changed it to 12 months? It used to be called moons and there used to be 13 of them 28 days long. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah. So then if I turn on the stars, the zodiac wheel is going just slightly faster than the sun. Right now, you see that the sun is transitioning from one um, zodiac into the other. And this zodiac will slowly move beyond the sun and the sun will move into the next zodiac. And then in uh, June and July, it'll be in cancer. And, and the, the zodiac wheel will, will lap the sun once a year. That's interesting. What do you say about yeah. the, 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 the things? This, has, this is totally off the subject, but you got me thinking about astrology. What do you think about people that say we're, in, we're entering into the age of Aquarius? Um, it very well might be. There, there's lots of big cycles that they don't tell us about. You know, they've hijacked our, our clocks, our body clocks. You know, we're connected to the earth. This entire system is a perfected system. Do you know that eclipses repeat every 18 years? Right? No, I didn't if we lived know in that. this heliocentric beehive, everything would be random. Um, but right now, check this out. This is how seasons work. This inner yellow line is the Tropic of Cancer. The outer yellow line is the Tropic of Capricorn. And the red line is the equation. This. If I jump forward to July or um, June, uh, we'll go to July. And uh, well, close enough. And that's our summer when the sun is over the Tropic of Cancer because it's closer to us. It's higher in the sky. Bring it closer, it's higher in the sky. Six months later, we jump, um, we go out to the Tropic of Capricorn and that's when we have our winter and Australia's having its summer. Oh, Australia's wow. having its summer because it's higher in the sky, it's closer to them and it's farther from us. We're having our winter, right? During our summer, during our summer when it's over the Tropic of Cancer, you see that it comes right around and it'll go right over, right over Miami. It'll go right over Miami, and that's because Miami's right under the Tropic of Cancer. If I turn on the zodiac, you'll see that the sun is in Cancer. That's why it's called the Tropic of Cancer, and that's how seasons work. Seasons make no sense on Earth. Seasons prove that the earth is flat. Do you know that during our summer, we're three and a half million miles farther away from the sun, according to the heliocentric model? That makes no sense. Makes no yeah, sense really. whatsoever. So, so that's how seasons work. Time zones, the sun, wherever the sun is, it's noon. And uh, like if I stop it right now, it is 9 a.m. in Eastern Australia. It's 1 a.m. in Central Africa. That's how the time zones work. And then, Here's how circumnavigation works. People often ask about that. North is at the center of the flat earth. South is every direction away from the center. You with me? Yeah. So if I go, if I go um, back, if I go down to, um, where is it? So here's the flat earth. Here is the North Pole, the magnetic North. I got a bunch of magnets here. I put a compass down. And it has to point to the north. I'm dead reckoning west, but I got to keep turning. Otherwise, I won't be heading west anymore. East and west are circles around the magnetic center. This doesn't prove that the earth is flat because it works the same on a ball earth. If I'm dead reckoning east, I could leave New York and go all the way around and come right back to where I started without changing my compass heading. I'm not going around a ball I'm just circling the central magnet. But if I tried to dead wreck into the West, right? I'm going to go in a straight line. I'm not going to keep correcting to the North. Immediately, I'm going South. I'm wow. heading South right now. South is every direction away from the center, right? I can go, I can go from, um, I can go, uh, you know, East and West. Where am I going? I can go, uh, I'm just trying to find uh, my map real quick. How about this map? So I can go east all the way around. I can go west all the way around. I can go from, from the United States. I can go north, 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 north. Now I'm heading south. As soon as I pass the North Pole, I'm heading south. I can go, and Japan's right over here. So I can go all the way north and, north and south, straight up and down. I can go 
around. I can dead wreck in West and make it to Japan. I can dead wreck in East and make it to Japan. I can't follow around. There we go. Dead wreck in East. What I can't do is go from Santiago South and then magically pop up over here because Why? we live on a ball. We don't live on a ball. This is, I should be able to do this, right? But, but we I can't, can't do that. You're saying. Yeah, I can't. So check this out. Here's a, this, if you wanted to go from Buenos Aires, major city to Perth, major city, this would be the quickest route. But because of the Antarctic Treaty, we can't fly over. We don't want to disturb the penguins. So I could just go around. I can go around. This would be the shortest route, right? This would be the shortest route if the earth was a globe, right? Maybe they'd even go over here to New Zealand. Is that New Zealand? Yeah. And then, then, then over here, okay, whatever. That's, a, you know, whatever. That's not the right flight route. Here's the flight route. If you want to go from Buenos Aires, you either stop in Miami or Houston, then you stop again in LA, then you stop in Sydney, and then you fly to Perth. It takes like 26 hours, right? Well, let me ask you this. What, what, do, what do pilots, um, what, what do pilots know? They just know not to follow the, 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 the I mean, they follow are, their flight path. They go the way that they're told to go. The other way they go is over here, Europe, Singapore, Perth, right? That is because they're at opposite ends of the world pond. This is the flight routes that they go, right? And sometimes when there's an emergency landing, that's when all, 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 all goes to hell because they, they land in places that make absolutely no sense on the globe. For example, there was a flight from uh, Taiwan to LA. Hawaii is right here. There was an emergency that happened, a medical emergency, and they had to land really quick. So they could have gone to Hawaii. They could have gone straight. But instead, they went all the way up to Alaska, right, which makes absolutely no sense. But on a flat earth, Taiwan, emergency, Alaska, straight line. Hawaii is all the way out here. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. And, and, and again, this, this happens all the time. And there's a book, 16 Emergency Landings Proving Flat Earth. Same thing. All of them make zero sense on the ball. They make perfect sense on a, on a, on a flat earth. Um, that book is available free online. Just look it up. It's a PDF. Or if you want to order it from lulu.com, it's an awesome coffee table book printed in color. Um, amazing. And anybody who picks it up and looks at it becomes a flat earther. So, well, so well, let me ask you this because uh, we're running out of time. Um, yep. You said that um, there's a flat earth society and that's PSYOP basically. What's up with that? Well, that's a government run disinformation site that Google pushes. Anytime you search flat earth, you get flat earth society nonsense. And if you go there, um, you'll end up laughing at flat earth and you'll never look at it seriously again. Right. Wow. Because they, they, it's a gatekeep. It's a gatekeeping for your mind. It's like when you search, uh, Hey, does uh, juicing organic uh, vegetables cure cancer? Uh, you're going to get a bunch of bullshit that it doesn't. When in fact, maybe it does. That's all I'll say. I don't want to get you a strike. Well, this has been amazing information, man. Um, do you, is there anything else you want to share? How do we get your app? Yeah, oh, Robert, there it is. The flat so, Earth. so here, here's the app right here. If you're looking down on a computer, just point your camera at this. It'll show up. The app's two dollars and ninety nine cents. The difference between my app and a beer or a Starbucks coffee is it costs less, and you have it forever. You don't pee it away after twenty minutes, right? Yeah. So that, and if you're unsure about paying for, I don't pay for apps. Well, read the reviews. Highest rated app in the App Store. Everybody loves it. It's an amazing, amazing app. It's called the Flatter Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, available on iPhone, uh, iPhone 6 or higher, and available on Google Play, where you have to have um, uh, 8.0 operating system or higher. So, um, and Android. I, yeah, on Android. Yeah, for Android. And um, it's, a, it's a great resource. You just watch the daily video. And turn on your, make sure you turn the notifications on. Every day you get one notification saying what the daily video is about. And then you watch that video, and um, it, you'll realize that you don't live on a spinning ball. And you too can lose the respect of your friends and family because you'll become a flat earther. Um, well, I think this was amazing information, man. You definitely got my mind spinning. Um, and, and that's what I want. I mean, I, I know that I know that everything's wrong in the world. You know what I mean? I just don't yeah. know how we make it right. You know, I, I, I don't know how the people so ever take that back their I gotta, sovereignty. I, yeah. I got to run. Ever, he, 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 no. here's, here, sorry. Go ahead. Finish. How we as a society ever take back our sovereignty and become one with God and be, uh, um, you know, like and not slaves to a society, you know? I got it. 
I got it. So this is why I left my own business. I was doing very well. Life is good. I'm living the American dream. I left it all to spread this message because I want my kids to have a future. If, if we somehow get our freedoms back after this nonsense that's going on with this great reset, if somehow we get it back, how long can we hold on to it if we're lost in space, spinning out of control, thinking we're insignificant, thinking we have no power, thinking that we have to obey the, the, the people wearing you know, um, Halloween costumes with badges on, right? None of that is real. None of it's real. So the reason I'm pushing this, it, I want people to wake up because when you wake up to the flat earth, you become a different person. Everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changed for me. Um, it's amazing. And uh, once people wake up to it, we'll all unplug from the matrix and that'll be the end of it. So hmm. anybody that's listening to this that has a podcast that wants to further this conversation, you can reach me at info at the flat earth podcast.com. I recommend getting my app because <clears throat> you'll love it. And it's, um, it's the most loved app in the app store. Well, it was really nice meeting you, Dave. Honestly, thank you. I, I, I really had a good, this was a great discussion. I really appreciate it. All right, Robert. Thanks. So, thanks so much for the conversation. And, uh, Send me a link when this goes up and we'll, um, I'll, I'll put it on the app. Okay, that's great. Yeah, thanks. All right. Um, all right. I'll send you a link. The Flat Earth Sun and Moon Clock App. A dynamic new app to teach family and friends about where they actually live. The sky is a perfect clock. The sun measures the hours and days. The moon measures the weeks and months. The star constellations measure the seasons and years. 12 12 or 24 hour clock face or go hands free the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app with new added features world time see what time it is all around the flat earth a true earth compass that shows true navigation across and around the flat earth plane weather tap for detailed local weather information know what phase and where the moon is at all times watch the sun travel between the tropics for the seasons Select an amazing background, add your own, or have the app change it to a new one automatically every time you use the app. Add a countdown to your next big date. Learn the truth about our world with the featured video of the day. Web button for additional Flat Earth related features, from the mythical curve calculator all the way to Tartaria. While talking to friends, easily pull up pictures that expose the globe lie and shine light on the Flat Earth truth video playlists in different languages see the real trade winds circling the flat earth and clean screen features simply click off the items you don't wish to see the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app is the best tool to show your friends and strangers how our flat earth actually works